State Representative Eileen Cody, thank you very much, ma'am, for coming. Also very lucky that uh, you put up with me and come and do this, so thank you. Damn straight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the good news for me is now uh, you've got the mic and TVW is going to run this, and so uh, I get to ask the questions. Um, tell me about this public option plan. Uh, first, let's talk about the, the, the weeds of it. It seems sort of like three buckets of stuff. It seems like the public option piece, migrating all of the exchange to the standardized benefit model, and this Medicare rate cap. Is that how you see it as sort of bucketed? I don't know whether I'd say bucketed, but uh, those are the piece, some of the pieces. Uh, definitely the standardized benefit package. And uh, I should say how we got there is that we have had a lot of concern from the consumers about how they're buying a product that they really can't use because of how high the deductibles are. And, and I also should say, we've got to remember this is just about the individual market, mm -hmm. that the individual market is not very big. It's you know, 200, 200 to 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. And that it's uh, more of, that's really the safety net when you don't have employer coverage that you're in the individual market. So we want to make sure that the individual market is available across the state and that it's affordable and that it's something that people can use. So I just kind of start from there. And so the standardized benefit package is one of the things that we've heard from consumers that they're really concerned about not being able to use the insurance that they've been have that's the only products that they have available. And so that's one piece. And then being able to have the state put out the RFQ and be able to coordinate the benefits package and set the rates at Medicare rates and then have it offered on the exchange so that we can use the federal uh, subsidies mm -hmm. so people won't lose their, their opportunity for subsidies. That's the idea. Yeah, and do you foresee, I, I believe this is not yet defined or determined, but I'll just ask, do you foresee there being one contracted plan that offers the public option to begin with? Or do you believe that maybe like the old BHP, there'll be a lot of plans? I, I would expect it'll be a lot of plans. Yeah. Um, where do you, I guess I wonder, explain to us, since it's just you and me and a martini, how did... Where's um, the martini? <laughs> <laughs> as you know, I, I will bring one up on the stage. Um, I know you've put a lot of legwork on this. Uh, this is really a Cody bill. And others like Senator Kaiser and Senator Frock are also supportive and engaged. How did Governor Inslee get involved? Well, uh, he's the governor, and it, it, he actually has, you know, decide, thinks about different health care. This is not his only health care bill this year. He's, we yeah. also have to finish the work on the opioid crisis, uh, let's, I, and so that, that's another one. But he uh, was interested in doing something, and he picked my bill. <laughs> yeah. Is that, um, uh, how do you think that will play in the legislature. I think a lot of folks see Inslee's role as about presidential politics, and uh, they don't sort of discount it as that, but it's just contextual to that. What do you think? Uh, well, I don't know whether he's running for president or not, but you have to ask him that one. Yeah. Uh, but I think that he felt like this was something the state could do and should do, and that that, and because it's not using a lot of state money, which is the other issue yeah. uh, that he didn't have, you know, we don't have a lot to put into the budget for, other, for things like this. Uh, so that's why I think he was interested. I think the, uh, you're gonna love this question. Um, I think that there are few members of the legislature as well respected as you, certainly few members of the Democratic caucus as well respected as you. Uh, Feared is the word I like to use. That works too. Uh, so if Eileen Cody had a candidate for speaker, that would mean something. Does Eileen Cody have a candidate for speaker? What, do I have a candidate? No, uh, I think that there, I think it's gonna be a woman, I'll yeah. predict that. Yeah. And we'll, we'll see, There's, we've got several yeah. that are uh, thinking about it. Do you think it'll get sorted out before the reorg in April or do you think it'll wait till then? I don't know. Uh, I actually, I may wait until then. Yeah. What's that going to be like having Frank Chop in the caucus, but not as speaker? <laughs> we all been asking that question. <laughs> uh, 
and we've you know, over martinis, decide which office he's going to have yeah. in the basement of JLOB. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, just kidding, yeah. just kidding, Frank. Uh, <laughs> Do you think it's possible that um, under this next speaker's, next Democratic leader who will be speaker in the near term, uh, under his or her guidance, that people will start to say, gosh, this is really hard. How did Frank Chop make this look so easy? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as you know, I've, I've given Frank a hard time for years about we, we really have to grow somebody to take over and, and uh, have a successorship. And I, I think that uh, that's why Frank has done it this way, is so he can actually help groom. And so the people that are interested in being speaker will be working with him this session to try and learn some of his skills. Yeah. Tell us, uh, same question I asked uh, JT, what do you think the story will be about this session when it comes to healthcare, when we write the history in April, so to speak? Well, I think he, JT's actually right about the first thing I'd say is the mental health and that that's gonna be bipartisan. We've been working very well together on that. And I think that everybody sees that that is a, a crisis that we have to, to address and that we have to get a plan in place that's not just for this biennium, but for the next 10 years or 20 years, because mm -hmm. uh, we didn't get here overnight, and we're not gonna get out of it overnight. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one thing that I definitely think we will see. Um, opioids would be, mm -hmm. that actually, the one thing I'll say about the opioid crisis is that I think it has brought substance use disorder to the forefront, because uh, I don't think anybody in the legislature doesn't know someone that has been affected by opioids. And so it has really changed people's attitudes about, you know, it's not just a self-inflicted life choice that people make. And uh, so that has been one of the most positive things I can say. Yeah. It's not, it's, you gotta make lemon eight out of lemons. Uh, but so I think that the work that we'll be doing on uh, substance use disorder and the opioid, the, it passed the, the bill last year, passed the House unanimously. And uh, there were Democrats and Republicans over in the Senate trying to work to get it out at the last minute, but it didn't, we didn't get it done. But so yeah. we'll, You'll get done this year. Yeah. Well, I, um, let me ask you a uh, last question. Um, five years from now, when you are uh, still chair and, and, and still firing away, as I expect and hope you will be, um, where, will we, where will we be in terms of policy? Uh, what will have changed? What big things will have happened in healthcare when we're doing this again in five years' time? Well, you know, I think that incrementalism is, is really how we make changes because uh, it's as a shown under the Affordable Care Act, big change is hard to do. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would hope that health care won't be a, such a partisan issue. That would be actually one of my, that's my dream, let's put it that way. Because we all get sick, what, no matter who, what, what part, who you vote for, for president. So I would hope that we, it would, on the federal level more, the state it hasn't been as partisan, but the federal level for sure, yeah. that they would start working together and try and solve some of the problems because we, you know, as everybody knows, we spend so much on healthcare and we have, don't have the best outcomes. And we need to also start putting more of our energy into health up front as the discussions about how things, in public health, I mean, I, we hopefully will make some uh, movement this year on getting some more money into public health, but that, you know, the germs don't start at the, stop at the county line. And so that's one of the things that I would like to see is, is trying to get more money into public health and get more emphasis on population health and public health. Yeah, well, <laughs> let me say that uh, uh, whether or not Machiavelli is correct, that it's better to be feared than loved. Uh, <laughs> many people respect Frank Chop. Some people like him. Uh, many people respect you, and many people like you. Thank you for your leadership in the legislature. Let's give Representative Eileen Cody a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you.